So in this video, what I want to do is show you how time is constructed in uh, modern jazz, which is everything from the swing era onward. Uh, time is what we call the rhythmic component of jazz. It's the foundation, the part that everything else is built upon. It's usually performed by the rhythm section. Time is uh, a component of the pulse of the tune that you tap your foot to, plus subdivisions and accents upon those subdivisions that generate the uh, that generate the feel of jazz and provide a nice bed or a nice foundation for all the melodies and improvisations that go on around uh, a tune. So I'm showing you here on the screen a jazz trio, which is a good example of not only a jazz trio, but the jazz trio, the piano, bass, drums component is a typical rhythm section for a jazz group. Now sometimes the piano is replaced by a guitar, sometimes uh, it could be another keyboard, especially in more modern jazz. It could be a synthesizer, as you see here. Uh, this red instrument is, uh, is an electronic keyboard that the keyboard player probably plays occasionally in the set. Uh, but you can see he's sitting at a grand piano right now. That is typically the foundational instrument for the chords of a jazz uh, rhythm section. And then we have here in the middle a um, person playing uh, the double bass or acoustic bass. Usually in jazz, uh, the bass is plucked with the fingers rather than using a bow, uh, more like it would be used in an orchestra setting. But occasionally you'll see jazz bass players play with a bow to get long sustained tones. And then here we have um, a typical uh, jazz drum kit uh, and I'm going to show you a couple of other pictures of that. So what we have here is uh, a rhythmic component or a drum component provided by the drum set or drum kit, a bass or a lower uh, note foundation for the harmonies and then uh, a keyboard player playing often on a uh, piano uh, playing different kinds of chord structures that, that provide the harmonic basis for the tune. Um, so I'm going to show you another uh, picture of the drum kit. Um, this is uh, sort of from the player's view. It'll show you the different instruments that are part of the drum kit. So this is a typical what they call four piece which is the standard basic drum set. Sometimes you'll see where there's like tons of other drums and tons of other cymbals. Uh, most jazz doesn't use these really big drum sets. Um, they tend to, to use the smaller four piece or maybe five which would be two toms uh, up here on the top. So we have the snare which sits right in front of the player with, uh, with one foot over on uh, the bass drum pedal and one foot over here on the hi-hat pedal. Um, and then this is a tom, which uh, is a high-pitched uh, drum, a floor tom, which is a lower-pitched drum, and then this drum here on the floor is sometimes referred to as a bass drum, but we usually call it a kick because it's played with the foot and you kick it, basically. Um, this is the seat that the drummer sits on, which usually is over here. It's just been moved out of the way so you can see better. Um, so this is called the hi-hat. It's actually two cymbals uh, suspended on a pole, uh, one upside down so that they come together sort of like clapping um, like this. And you can use the hi-hat in a lot of different ways. The foot pedal makes this top cymbal clamp down on the lower cymbal. The lower cymbal is stationary and it's the upper cymbal that moves. So the foot makes the upper symbol move up and down and as you push your foot down the upper symbol comes down on the lower symbol so you can hold it tight um, together with your foot held all the way down or you can sort of smash it on the beat which is what typically we do uh, in a in a jazz setting so the hi-hat is actually a really important instrument to uh, to the time in jazz uh, the other cymbals up here are used in different ways. This one is called the ride cymbal. It's usually played with the right hand. Um, so the right hand plays between the hat and the ride. The left hand plays on the snare most of the time with these sticks. And then they both, um, both hands play on the toms. And also occasionally when they're doing a solo, you'll see them playing cymbals with both hands uh, as well. 
So this is the ride symbol, which is also very important for the time. These two symbols are different types of what they call crash symbols, which are just single hit accents. And they're usually pitched a little bit differently, so you have like a ch ch kind of a sound. The ride is um, a little more pingy, ping, ting, ting, ting. I'll show you what that sounds like in a minute. So that's your basic um, drum kit for a jazz setting. Uh, here I'll show you another uh, view. So here's a little bit more of how somebody might play it. You can see the right hand playing on the ride cymbal. Uh, his, this player's left hand is, is, is holding the cymbal uh, together, uh, the hi-hat, because he was probably over here using that as an extra muting effect. Okay, so I want to show you now I've put together a um, sort of electronic version of a fundamental jazz beat. Uh, I'm using a program called um, Digital Performer here, and I wanted to do that so that I could pick apart the different part, the different components of uh, a typical jazz rhythm section. So we have uh, tracks for the ride cymbal, the hat, the snare, the kick, and then a bass line. Um, there's two things I want to show you here is how these different parts of the drum kit come together to create an overall feel or a rhythmic pattern or what we call time in uh, jazz and I also want to show you the difference between straight time and swing. In jazz time is not only just the rhythmic patterns that are played but they're also the feel of how uh, how the, the rhythm is is uh, subdivided so the pulse that you're tapping your foot to uh, can be subdivided in a lot of different ways and the way that jazz subdivides it is called swing um, which is a little bit different from something like rock um, so I want to show you how that works so what I did first uh, was record uh, a bass and drum pattern with uh, what's called straight time straight time means that if you're thinking about your foot tapping it's down, up, down, up, so that the beat is one, two, three, four. And you can divide that beat into subdivisions so that it's like one and two and three and four and. And the and is precisely halfway through the beat. In other words, it's when your hand is at the top or your foot is at the top of the travel. So it's one and two and three and four and. Where the first half of the beat and the second half of the beat are equal. It's equal divisions of the beat. And sometimes you divide the beat up into four parts. So it would be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Those would be called sixteenth notes. So dividing the beat in half, one and two and three and four and and dividing the beat into four parts, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So if you did it at the same tempo, it would be one and two and one E and a, two E and a, one and two and one E and a, two E and a. So that's how I recorded this first, is with equal divisions of the eighth note. And you'll hear it here in the, um, in the ride symbol, which is what the ride symbol's job is primarily to, um, to subdivide the beat according to the feel. So if we count along, it's one, two, and three, four, and 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 one. So I've made eight, be eight measures here. Uh, it's actually starting on measure two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It ends here. So it's an eight measure phrase, which you'll notice that a lot of jazz fits into an eight measure pattern. And we'll talk about that uh, in another uh, video today. So I'm going to add some other components to that. Uh, the hi hat, which you recall is the one that. Um, is played with the left foot that opens up and down. And in, in a lot of jazz, not really, really modern rock influenced jazz or experimental jazz, but in a lot of jazz from the swing era onwards, the hi-hat was invented in the 20s. 
uh, but it wasn't used in this way until uh, into the swing era, which is the latter part of the 30s. Uh, the hi-hat was originally used as sort of a decorative a special effect. It was like, oh wow, there's a hi-hat. Because um, it was so brand new, it was very rare. Um, but then it became uh, obviously very useful for creating pulse. So in this case, um, I made the hi-hat, this is all electronic sounds, but it replicates the sound of a hi-hat, it's a sample. Typically, the hi-hat plays on beat two and four of a four bar measure, four beat measure. So you have one, two, three, four, one, chick, one, chick, one, chick, three, chick, one, chick, three, chick. So that's what's happening here. I'm going to turn the metronome on so you can hear where the pulse actually is. So if I add that combined with the ride, which was more on the beat and more on the downbeats or the first beats of the bar, these two symbols start to create a pattern that, that gives us a little bit of a feel of the tune. So, and if you know anything about um, African rhythms and stuff, you know that there are quite a few different patterns that are overlaying, sometimes with metallic sounds, sometimes with drums, sometimes with clapping, sometimes with wooden sounds. These various rhythms overlay each other uh, and create the overall feel, of the pulse of the composition. That's exactly what's happening here with these different instruments in the drum kit, is we have the different parts laying together with patterns that create a combined sound. So I'll show you what the snare is doing. Again with the metronome on. The snare is the drum that sits right in front of the player. So the, the job of the snare in jazz is to create interest and excitement to punctuate things. If you listen to a lot of rock music, you hear a lot of snare on two and four. It's like boom, chink, boom, chink, boom, chink. So you got your, your very strong two and four played by the snare drum. And some jazz uses that. Um, sometimes it's called a backbeat. It's on the back of the main pulse. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, but jazz uses the snare in a more elaborate way than just a continuous pattern of two and four. So you'll see that the snare, particularly a real acoustic drum, can, pl can be played quite delicately and with a lot of nuance. And if you focus in on what the snare is doing as you're listening or watching in a video, um, you'll see that the jazz drummer uh, is using uh, the performer's left hand to really um, embellish the melodies and the improvisations that are going around. And it is by no means just a simple one, two, three, four. The kick drum is the same thing. Again, in a rock sort of beat or a typical standard beat, your, your kick drum is going to be pretty, pretty much playing a standard pattern. Sometimes it's one and three. Sometimes it's some sort of a syncopated beat that is either one or two measures long, and that pretty much repeats. In, uh, in jazz, the kick drum is a variable instrument just like the snare. The timing is coming from uh, the ride and the, the hat. And then as you'll see in a minute, the real strength of the beat comes from the bass, uh, the, ba the double bass actually, not the drums. So the kick and the snare are very much embellishing the whole thing. So let's listen to what we have so far with the whole drum kit. Keeping in mind, this is straight time, so it doesn't quite sound like jazz yet. Okay, and so then I'm going to add the bass in, and you can see the bass line here uh, on the grid. This is what's called walking bass, which is very typical in swing and, and some of that middle era, era 
jazz, like even uh, cool and hard bop, um, walking means that the bass is playing pretty much quarter notes most of the time on the beat pretty constantly. And you'll see I've put in here a couple of 16th note little accents along the way. So I'm going to just play the bass line for a second so you can hear it. And this is a plucked bass sound. And you'll see there's a little bit of pickup. And if we add that into the to the drums. We get a pretty clear rhythmic component. So we're pretty close. We haven't quite got a jazz feel yet because we're still using that equal division of the eighth note. Ta ta ta. So it's ta 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 ta. But if we want to add a jazz feel to it, we want to subdivide that beat unequally. So I've done that in a different part of this track over here. Actually, let me show you this first. So if we zoom in a little bit tighter on just the hi-hat part, sorry, just the ride part, you'll see that this is a eighth note grid. In other words, equal subdivisions of the beat into two parts. You'll see that the actual strikes of the hat line up to the either the, the actual one of the beat or one and one, two, and three. T -t 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 -t. If I go over here to where I've subdivided it in a, in a groove, you'll see that now the note that falls on where it would normally be the up half of the beat, one, and two, and it's a little later. You see it's a little bit after the line. And so it's not equally subdivided anymore. And it's going to sound more like jazz. So let me bring these other parts back in, in our view. Uh, and we'll see how it all comes together. So I've applied this swing. In other words, this unequal division of the beat to all the parts. And that's what uh, causes it to sound more like jazz. said, what about the piano? So thank you for asking. So I'll play a little piano along with and show you what is called comping. Comping is what the piano does as part of the rhythm section versus playing a melody or soloing. When another instrument like a saxophone is playing the melody either at the the beginning of the tune, which we call the head, the main theme, or during um, during the solos, the piano is providing harmonic and rhythmic uh, accompaniment as part of the rhythm section. So we have the drums, as we've talked about, the bass doing a lot of on the beat kind of playing that gives us a really strong foundation, and then 
The piano is providing a thicker harmonic element that is also rhythmic. So here we go, let's give it a try. So there's your time, jazz, uh, time created by various instruments in the drum kit, the hat giving a very strong two and four, uh, the ride cymbal giving us subdivisions of the beat that are unequal, that creates the swing feel of jazz, the snare and the kick kind of working together to uh, provide a, a foundation for the beat plus enhancing and interacting with the band. Uh, the bass, boom, 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 boom. Oftentimes walking or providing a really strong outline of the core, the thing you tap your foot to, the main beats of the tune, and then the piano providing some harmonic structure to the song, uh, as well as rhythmic punctuation, little tiny fills around the melody that make uh, that make the whole composition, the whole performance seem a little more interesting. So that's time and swing in jazz. See ya, bye.